Want to know which Perth suburb grew by 14% in the last 12 months? Well, the first green shoots are finally showing in the Perth property market. So stay tuned for the spring update and I'll share with you all the data and what's happening out there. But first, let me introduce myself. G'day guys, my name is Tim Guest. And I'm Australia's leading financial educator and the founder of Infinite Wealth. Welcome to our Just Ask Tim video series, and this is where you can get all your questions answered on anything finance, real estate, investment related, and more. Now please also like, comment, share this video, and if it's your first time tuning in, welcome along, and thanks for joining us, and don't forget to follow or subscribe wherever you are seeing this. Now history shows rents often move before prices do, and therefore a significant improvement in the rental market can be a precursor to price rises. That's what makes the upturn in Perth's rental market so significant. Perth's recovery, which was gathering pace in late 2018 and early 19, stalled in the lead up to the federal election. Now that the uncertainty has been removed and following moves that make it easier and cheaper to get finance, I expect Perth to move more strongly now into a recovery phase. So the rental increases in Perth are the second strongest in the capital cities of Australia. Only Hobart, amongst the major cities has recorded larger increases in residential rents than Perth in the past 12 months. And this is also confirmed by the latest data from both Domain and SQM Research. So Domain records annual growth of 5.7% for house rents in Perth and 3.3% for units. SQM growth figures are 4.5% for houses and 4.9% for apartments. The rental increases come on the back of big improvements in Perth's vacancy rate. So previously as high as 7.2% in mid-2018, Perth vacancies dropped to around 4% and there have been steady decreases since then. The latest data from SQM finds vacancies are now 2.9% and that's the first time that Perth has been below that 3% benchmark. Now there's also evidence of an improvement in prices. So the SQM weekly prices index showed improvement in both the monthly and weekly indexes for house prices in Perth in October, although it does remain down 1.8% in annual terms. So the Perth recovery is clearly back on track having paused in the lead up to the federal election. So sales activity is solid to strong in many locations and some areas have had price growth. So the price predictor index published by Hotspotting that recorded uh, increasingly strong signs of recovery in the Perth markets in 2018 and once again in early 19. The number of suburbs with growing sales activities also increased in five consecutive quarters from 39 to 53. So once again, undeniable evidence that the Perth demand was growing in the metro area. But then the revival hit a wall called the federal election. Like many locations across capital city Australia, Perth paused amidst the uncertainty created by the prospect of a Labor victory and major tax changes. Tighter finance and a highly negative media also contributed to putting the brakes on the Perth recovery. Now, for those reasons, the number of growth markets across the Perth metropolitan area dropped to 37 in their winter survey. But now this spring survey shows the decline has likely bottomed out with this steady number of growth markets and improving numbers of consistency markets. There are also now very few declining markets. So our analysis of price trends shows that close to 30% of Perth suburbs have had growth in their medians in the past year alone. The list of places with rising prices is dominated by top end markets and upper middle market locations with medians above 700,000. So Mount Pleasant, which has stood out in a number of their recent surveys, continues to be the market leader with its median house price rising 14% to 1.25 million in the past 12 months. The suburb is also part of the Melville local government area, which has been and remains one of the most solid precincts in the Perth market. An emerging feature which is also happening is the number of suburbs with medians lower than a year ago, but with growth in the latest quarter, once again providing further evidence of a revival. Most of the locations exhibiting that trend are at the affordable end of the market. So examples include Two Rocks in the Wanneroo local government area with a median house price of 370 k That's down 3% in annual terms, but up 2% in the latest quarter. Huntingdale, which also has a median house price of 375, was down 1% in annual terms, but also 1% in the latest quarter. As I've also noted in several of our previous updates, the recovery in the Perth market after several down years has been dominated by four municipalities, Joondalup, Stirling, Wanneroo, and Melville. This spring survey confirms that this is still the case. Now, if we now turn our attention to regional WA, the only regional areas with a glimmer of forward momentum are the two lifestyle markets close to Perth, so that being Mandra and Mundaring. Both have a few suburbs where sales activity is rising, but the price outcomes are mixed, especially for Mandra. So Erskine, Falcon, Meadow Springs, both appear to have had some growth in their sales activity, but as we've seen in the past, it's rare for these locations to record sustained progress. 
And some major locations have highly negative price trends. So those recording significant declines in their median house prices in the past 12 months include places like Dawesville, Dudley Park, Mandra, and Condown, which also have gone backwards by eight to 11%. Now the Mundaring local government area immediately east of Perth has two locations with rising sales activities and others with steady demand. Essentially elsewhere in regional WA, it's a story of stagnation and negative outcomes. And of course, if you're looking to invest, it would be a smart idea to speak to one of our teams so that we can assist you select the best area in Australia suited to your unique circumstances and needs. But guys, that's pretty much it from me now. Also, don't remember, uh, don't forget to like, comment, and share this video, and remember to follow or subscribe wherever you're seeing this. Also, if you want to submit a question or as a topic that you'd like me to discuss in more detail for our Just Ask Tim video series, there's a link in the post. So stay tuned later this week because I'll be coming at you with the week in real estate, the wire where you can get all the top stories happening this week in finance, real estate, and investment. Guys, have a great week, and remember, there's only one thing in life that makes a difference: action. See you later.